when you want to create a miter, you're typically going to cut your parts on a chop saw or a miter saw. And what will typically happen is you'll set the blade to 45 degrees, you'll make your cuts, and you'll get a pretty good cut depending on the sharpness of your blade and how stiff your saw is, things like that. This, this was just cut on my chop saw, which is set up pretty well with a decent blade on it. But if we look at it closely, when I put this together, there's, I can rock that a little bit and, and close up the joint at the tip. I'm not sure that really showing up, but it's, it's not quite as good as it could be. So I would want to clean that up a little bit better, and I'm going to do that on a shooting board. Now the other miter joint is like that, and that would be if we're you know making a box or a cabinet like that. And similarly, I can cut that on the chop saw, but if I can clean it up with a shooting board, I'm going to get a much nicer joint. I've got my shooting board here with a miter fixture on it. This is just a simple you know, piece of plywood with a hardwood strip on it. And the hardwood strip is so I can plane it to fine tune the angle. It's mounted on here just with a knob that threads into an insert in the shooting board. So to use it, I'm just going to put this up against here. That looks great. And that looks great. So that's, a, let's say, a picture frame miter. If I want to do a box miter with the boards flat, I need a different jig for that. That different jig is a donkey's ear. Now this, I think technically is not a donkey's ear, but it, it works like a donkey's ear. And I'll, I'll show a picture of what would be a more traditional donkey's ear. This is a design that's fairly common. If you search on the web for donkey's ear, you'll see something similar to this. And it mounts on my shooting board. Similarly, there's a hole here and I've got a knob. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this and use this to clean up those other miters. I've got this on here now. So let's go ahead and clean up these guys. Okay, once again, nice clean cut. So let's see how those look. So here's the picture frame miter. That looks great, nice and clean. And here's the box miter. If I can get that lined up, there we go. Nice and clean, no gaps. That looks fantastic. Making this jig is pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's a piece of plywood with a piece of hardwood glued on here so I can true it up and, and really dial in the 45 degrees. This other one is a little trickier. So I'm going to walk through the process of making this and I have the procedure for that. So I'll be following that as I go. I've got all my parts cut out per the cut list. I'm using Baltic birch for the man-made sheet materials. So I've got the bottom, the two sides, which I'm going to cut at 45 degrees, and the ramp, and that's going to get a 45-degree cut at the bottom. And then for the, the fence and the spacer here, I've got some poplar. I, I want to use something relatively soft uh, because you know I'm going to be cutting into it a little bit at times. And uh, my parts are actually a little thinner than three quarter. I just had a piece kicking around. Uh, but as long as these are the same thickness, right? They need to be the same because of the support there. Uh, I'm going to be just fine. So I'm going to go cut cut my angled uh, pieces here. The first cut I'm going to make is the 45 degrees at the bottom of the ramp. Now, I, I'm i not going to use my fence for this because that's, that's too unstable. I don't have enough of a wheelbase there. So I rarely use my miter gauge, but this is one of the times when it's going to come in handy. 
So uh, I'll just make the cut like that with uh, supported on my miter guide and that should uh, keep things nice and stable. <laughs> Next up, I'm going to make these 45 degree cuts. So I've got a fixture here on my sled. I just clamp it to my sled and I'm going to put this here. I've got this set up so the kerf is in line with that. So I'm just going to align one corner there and clamp that down and I should be able to make two two identical cuts. Okay. And that's, that's great, nice and smooth. Now, if I didn't have this jig I would, you know, I, I, these these parts were square, so I could just draw a line corner to corner, make a cut maybe on the bandsaw, and then sand them very carefully flat. I You could actually hand plane these, but it's going to be hard on your hand plane. You'll definitely have to sharpen it afterwards because these glue lines definitely will, will mess with your blade. Uh, so whatever works for you, but we definitely need two pieces virtually identical as close to 45 degrees as you can get. Now, if there's not quite 45, we'll have a chance to tweak that later. Next, I'm gonna create the rabbits that the bottom fits in. So they are a quarter of an inch deep and a 16th of an inch wider than the thickness of this material. So what I'll do is I'll set, uh, I'm gonna set the fence to the correct dimension here. And the dimension is the thickness of the material plus a 16th. So that's you know, half the width of the blade. I just happen to get that pretty darn close there. So remember, I, I wanna measure to the left side of the, of the blade. So I'm gonna be making a cut like that. And I need to remember, I, I need a left and a right to these. So I'm gonna cut one like that and one like that. Now. If I was thinking ahead, I should have done this while these were square. It would have been a little easier, but this, this is still going to work just fine. So I, I need to set the blade so it's about a quarter of an inch. So that looks okay. That's good. Quarter inch. Cut and cut. This gives me a left and a right. Next, I'll make the other cut. So I want to come over, uh, I want to go in a quarter of an inch. So I'll measure from the outside of my piece to the right side of the blade. I don't want to cut it this way uh, because I don't want my off cut trap between the the blade and the fence. So I have to do it so my off cut is on the left side. So that looks actually pretty close. Yeah, that looks fine. And then for the height, I just need to raise the blade up. So I'm in inside my kerf and, and we'll see how that looks. Alrighty, that looks great. Now I should point out, I, I did cut a, on the first cut, I went a little deeper than a quarter and I can just see the score marks from the blade, which is good because if, if I'm a little shallow on both cuts, then I end up with some crud or a little step in the corner. So going a little deeper on one of the cuts ensures that I, I have a nice square corner. So that, that looks great. 
I also want to verify that I've, I've got you know a little bit extra material here, about a sixteenth, so, so that looks great. The next step is to attach the sides to the bottom. So I'm going to mark for my screw holes and I'm just eyeballing here. I'll go ahead and drill uh, clearance holes and countersinks here and then we'll go ahead and attach those. I've got this clamped in place and I'm just going to use the same size bit as my clearance hole just to dimple here so that I know where to drill my pilot hole. Pilot hole bit, now that's out about the same length as my screw, inch and a half. So I'll take this off, throw some glue in there and put it together. Okay, next I'm going to attach the ramp. Now, when, when you put the ramp on, you need to pay attention to two things. One, make sure you set it in the correct orientation. We can have it flush on this side or on this side. Now, since my, my current one is for right-handed shooting, I'm gonna make this one for left-handed shooting. So I'm going to make this edge flush. The other thing to watch out for is you want the bevel down. I've seen people make this like this, and now your part sits sits above your, your regular shooting board. So, so make sure it's beveled down. And I'll go ahead and same as before, drill some clearance holes and pilot holes and then attach this to the uh, sides here. One other thing to watch out for, you know, when you mark for these holes, you know, pay attention to where they're headed here. If you, know, you put this one too close to the end, you might come out here. So I'm going to set this up so I can see what's happening. And I, I don't want to hit this other screw here either. So I'll put the first one about there, top one about there, and then I'll put the other one in the middle. You also make sure you mark the center this way, right? Depending on where you put this, it's going to make a difference on where the screws go. So I'm attaching this on the one side. Just kind of temporarily make sure it's in position. So that feels good. Now I'll go ahead and do this side. All right, I didn't glue this on. This isn't under the same forces as this bottom piece, and I might want to take this off at some point to you know get inside there. So so that one's not glued on. So we'll install the fence and the spacer next. Before I install the fence, I need to cut my angles down here. So I've set my combination square here just a little over three quarters since I think that's probably the thickest material I'll, I'll ever be cutting on this. So I'm going to I'm going to set this so this is hanging out here by that amount. And I need my 45 degree to be you know, basically there, there and there. So I'll go cut that on my chop saw. I've got my holes drilled here. And before, before I drilled them, I marked where they were. So I wanted to drill, so I'm going into the plywood here. I don't want to be going into the end grain if I can avoid it. And I also marked them so I'm not gonna hit these screws here. So 
those are ready to go. So I'll go ahead and mount that. At the same time, I drilled a hole in the spacer. So that'll, that'll sit down there. Okay, this is almost ready to go. I did have to move my spacer a little bit because this fence is a little shorter than, than a typical fence. So I just moved that over a little bit. So that mounts on there nicely. Now, I've got a insert, which I actually just installed. I didn't have one on this shooting board. And I found with, with this jig and, and with my other miter jig, the best place to put this is five and a quarter from the reference here and three and a quarter from the fence. So I'm going to, now that this is all together, I'm going to measure the same dimensions, you know, from here and there and drill a hole there so I can attach this to the uh, shooting board. I've got a piece of wood clamped inside here so that when I drill through here, I don't get tear out. So we'll see if I can. I've got my knob ready to go now. I just took a 5 16 a female knob and epoxied in a bolt. And before I try this out, I need to chamfer this back edge. So I'll go ahead and put this on here. Make sure it's, you know, tight up against my fence. And we'll try it out here. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. So I'll get a test piece and we'll give it a shot. I've got the same test piece as I had before when I did the initial demonstration. I also, particularly when I'm using the, the donkey's ear, it's a little hard to hold the shooting board from moving around. So I've got a piece in my vise here, so, you know, or I could use a bench dog just to keep it from pushing that way. So we'll give this a shot. So I'm going to cut both pieces. And they certainly look good just, just looking down in there. Okay, so that looks great. Now, in order for this to be working correctly, you know, two things have to happen. The, the cut needs to be square, and of course it needs to be at 45 degrees. So to check it for square, I've got two pieces. I'm going to set them back to back and set them so that that sharp corner is sitting on my bench. And if both these edges are aligned, which they are, then my cut is square. If, if they were, you know, like that, then I would have to tweak the jig a little bit. And what I would do is either take a little bit of material off of this surface or this surface to, to get things square. So fortunately, that lined up very nicely. The other thing I need to check is, am I at 45 degrees? And you can just measure one of these, but I've found, you know, that certainly looks pretty good. It might be off a hair, but what what I find is better is, and it's a little trickier to do, it's easier with two people, but hold this nice and tight and check for 90 degrees. And you can do that. Or maybe hold that at 90. So, yeah, so that I can wiggle that a little bit, and that, that is, when I just check 45, that's kind of what it looked like. So it's a little 
further, it's a little steeper than I want. I, I really need to take a little material off the end in order to fix that. Yeah, so <clears throat> if, if I want to remove more off of the end, I need to drop the back end of this. So that's why I, when we made that rabbit to put the bottom on, that's why we left this 16th. So now I've got some material I can remove here and here as opposed to taking it off this whole surface. So I'm going to, I think for something like this, I'm actually going to use, well, I could use my hand plane. It's a little tricky because I've got to get both of these. I could sand them if I had a big, you know, a big block with sandpaper on it. It's a little tricky to do that, but I think the best way is going to be... Uh, using a plane and like I said I'll dull my plane a little bit but it's only one time here I've got this in the vise so I can plane it I did take one swipe there so what I think what I'm going to do is go increasing or decreasing lengths of cut here That's actually four, five, six. Okay, I'll give that a shot and I'll I'll continue to do that until I've got this dialed in. When when I'm done, or maybe even now, I should check to make sure this is not rocking. Yes, I, I apparently took an even amount off both of those. So I'll, I'll uh, go back and forth maybe and, and test this a few times till I get the 45 just right. All right, I've got this dialed in now. I'm getting nice 45 degree cuts for a total of 90 degrees. It took another set of passes with my block plane to, to get it to the right angle, but now it's dialed right in. So uh, this is good to go. I, I'm not sure I mentioned, I did you know, kind of round over edges a little bit just to make it a little easier to handle. I always try to avoid doing any sanding anywhere where the blade is going to be hitting because that the, that grit can really uh, chip your blade easily. So I did not sand down in this area. So I think we're all set. I wanted to mention one other thing. This is this is another little yes donkey's ear kind of thing that I've used. This is this is obviously a right-handed uh, version. This is for smaller stuff. Uh, I've used this just for you know, little parts if you're making little drawers or things like that, or, or if you're making little compartments for drawers. This works nicely. I, I've only used it once or twice. I should probably you know make a uh, hole here so I can attach it to the uh, shooting board. But the nice thing about this one is it's just you know four pieces of MDF glued together. But it's small enough that I can tweak this on my disc sander, whereas, you know, this is too big to deal with that, that uh, machine. But uh, this works nicely for, for smaller items. So I think that covers everything for the donkey's ear.